This tale unfolds after the events of the main quest storyline from The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. The Phantom of Kakariko, written by Ramenko. As Paya strolled through Kakariko village, morning mist blanketed the ancient rooftops. The air was rich with the scent of wood smoke, while the spirited shouts of children playing near the cookhouse filled the village with life. Amidst the bustle, Paya's soft footsteps were a gentle whisper, and while she exchanged polite nods and kind greetings with the villagers, an air of detachment surrounded her. For beneath her composed exterior, a fervent passion simmered. Her heart belonged to the legendary hero, Link, a name that resonated with the echoes of countless tales spun throughout Hyrule. And in the solitude of night, under a canopy of infinite stars, she poured her deepest emotions onto the pages of her diary. Paya chronicled the moment her love took root. I spoke to Grandmother about what's been weighing on my mind lately. She wrote on page two. For the first time, my heart knows what it means to love, though it may be a love that is never shared or returned. Just having it for myself is gift enough. Seeing him brings me great joy. I bet he has that effect on everyone. At night, bathed in the soft glow of candlelight, she wrote of Link's shining qualities. She captured the sky-blue crinkle of his eyes when he laughed, and the warmth in his voice as he spoke to old Clary while he helped with the wash. She documented every encounter with him, the stolen glances, the accidental brushes of hands, the pure delight of his laughter ringing in her ears. Her love, an unbridled torrent spilled onto the pages like a river in full flow. Yet in his presence, she remained guarded, keeping a careful distance. Her bloom remained hidden in the shadows. But one day, after watching Link leave the village for yet another adventure, Paya felt an unfamiliar heaviness settle in her chest. It clung to her, casting a subtle gloom over her days. In his absence, the weight persisted, steadfast and unyielding. Upon hearing of Link's return, Paya's world transformed. The weight in her chest dissipated like fog under the morning sun. In his presence, her steps were as light as air. His aura left her suspended in euphoria, a feeling she could scarcely put into words. And at night, while the village lay in slumber, Paya lay awake. Sleep eluded her as thoughts overflowed with memories of him. His valour, the timbre of his voice, the kindness in his gaze, all played on an endless loop, a melody that refused to be silenced. The diary became her sanctuary, a haven where loneliness dissolved and dreams took flight. Within its pages, Paya found release, her inked confessions a silent testament to a love that dared not speak its name. On page 47, she admitted, Link visited today. He didn't come for me, but I caught a glimpse of him. For the first time, I longed to run to embrace him. I didn't. How could I explain? A brief hello was all I could manage before I fled, a sudden fever overtaking me. I feared I might collapse. His mind is burdened enough without my worries. The fever hasn't gone away. I pray it's not sickness. Unbeknownst to her, it had become an unconscious habit to watch him from afar. Her gaze was irresistibly drawn to his every movement. She remained oblivious to the subtle tremor that crept into her voice whenever conversations brushed upon the topic of love. In moments of vulnerability, the idea of confessing her feelings to Link would tiptoe into her mind only to be forcefully shoved away. The fear of rejection paralyzed her, and the thought of their delicate friendship, the only thread that bound them, unraveling under the weight of her confession, was a haunting reality she couldn't face. So, she chose silence, letting her unspoken love fester like an infected wound. Yet one evening, while in Link's presence, she mustered the courage to purposefully brush her fingers against his, a silent plea etched in that gentle touch, begging him to understand. 
Of course, he'd never noticed the subtle significance behind her actions, for his gaze was always fixed elsewhere. Nevertheless, the countless intimate hours spent with her diary continued to nurture this longing, a delicate seed planted in the fertile soil of love. With each sunrise, the seed sprouted and grew, its roots digging deeper into her. Memories of him brought her joy, but they also left empty spaces that only he could fill. The agony of unrequited love was a bitter pill to swallow, yet she endured, hoping against hope that one day, the courage to share her feelings would find its way, like a fragile whisper in the wind, reaching out for a chance to be heard. The village remained blissfully ignorant of Paya's inner turmoil. During the day, she diligently fulfilled her duties as the chief, concealing her deepening heartache behind carefully crafted smiles. Often, she'd daydream about being alone with Link. At times, she'd stare ahead, completely oblivious to her surroundings, hearing nothing but his voice, seeing nothing but his face. These daydreams were frequently interrupted by the sound of her name being called or a gentle tap on her shoulder, jolting her back to reality. She would startle, apologize for her absent-mindedness and forcefully push her fantasies aside, only to resurrect them under the cover of night. And at night, her dreams unfolded like scenes in a captivating theater where solitude offered her the freedom to embrace her true self, a woman deeply in love. In the confines of her private chambers, she allowed her mind to wander to uncharted territories. Perched on her window sill, she would gaze at the sky, envisioning herself on a Zonai plane, soaring alongside Link, liberated from the earthly constraints that bound her. She fantasized about an idyllic picnic on a sky island, just the two of them, their gazes lost in the white sea of clouds. The sun bathed them in a warm golden light as they shared laughter and stories. The taste of dazzle fruit lingered on her tongue, and the imagined warmth of Link's embrace soothed her. The mere thought of a day alone with him was exhilarating, even if it was just a fleeting moment in her dreams. In her diary, on page 129, she wrote, He came by again today. He was accompanied by the princess. Welcoming the princess to the village is a joy and honor, one I've always looked forward to receiving. But today felt strange. I couldn't stay, couldn't engage with them for long. Often we lose track of time when we're all together. But today, I couldn't be around them. They'd done nothing to offend me. It is a feeling that is difficult to express. I politely refused their invites. They were confused when I chose to leave. You could especially see it on her face. They planned to stay the night. I wonder about the rooms at the inn, if they reserved one or two. I can't bring myself to ask. As time passed and Paya witnessed the blossoming closeness between Zelda and Link, she couldn't help but discreetly turn away, the sight of their effortless camaraderie becoming too much for her to bear. Instead, she would immerse herself in communal tasks, deliberately avoiding their gaze. She had once cherished her secret love, but now... One day a friend came by to visit her. At the time, she casually mentioned, Did you hear? Princess Zelda and Link bought a house together in Hateno Village. They seem so happy. She deserves it after all she's been through. Isn't it wonderful? Paya forced a smile. Yes, truly wonderful. It seemed their happiness was always on display, a constant, taunting reminder of what she could never have. On another occasion, as she observed them laughing together, her stomach churned, a sudden nausea sweeping over her. She hastily excused herself. Activities she had once enjoyed lost their luster, the vibrant world around her fading into shades of grey. Paya's feet, once quick to match the rhythm of the village dances, now moved with purpose towards the outskirts. Away from the lively crowd, she found peace in solitude, in the stillness of her room, where her diary whispered secrets only she could hear. On page 302, she wrote, 
They arrived today and I remained indoors. My stomach didn't feel well. Again, the people needed me, depended on me. It's frustrating. I can't blame Master Link. It's not his fault. No, it's her. I've felt it for some time, but today confirmed it. She unsettles me. I'm not sure when this began. I pray for clarity. She wrote slowly as she mulled over every word. When she finished, she read the entry again, realizing it was the first time she'd ever expressed resentment. Over the years, the sight of Link and Zelda together would drain the color from Pyre's face. They would be deep in conversation, sharing secrets and laughter unknown to her. Pyre's body would tense, her jaw clenched as if the chill of an unseen breeze cut through her, not the gentle zephyr that caressed the village. Slowly, she started to avoid village gatherings unless her presence as chief was necessary. She would work through meals and shun any occasion where the princess's effortless poise might only serve to highlight Pyre's own hidden turmoil. Had leadership become an unintentional prison? One night, without much thought or intent, Pyre wrote a short story. It was a fictional story. And in this story, she created a universe in which Zelda never existed. It initially started as a playful hypothesis. She assured herself she was merely indulging in an innocent creative pursuit. Her pen danced across the paper as she wrote it. Pages of her diary ripped and tore as she hurriedly flipped to the next one, her scribbling becoming more erratic. Each night she was lost in a trance state, and after a week, when the story was complete, she rejoiced and shed tears. Her tale ended with she and Link coming together in joyous union. Finally, there existed a world in which Pyre was Link's one and only. And so, night after night, she indulged in the ritual of reading her own words, savoring the satisfaction that welled up as she reached the story's end. And then one night, she thought to write another story, and another, and another. In a matter of weeks, she authored an entire anthology of fiction. Her stories were charmingly simple, depicting tender encounters between she and Link, their love blossoming in the magical worlds she'd crafted. Each tale concluded with the promise of eternal happiness, Pyre and Link soaring into the horizon together, their love destined to endure for all time, happily ever after. The sheer elation she felt, the intoxicating joy of seeing her character's happiness, became an addiction. While reading, she'd lose herself for hours, completely unaware of the passing of the time. It was during these moments that she would taste Link's lips, feel his fingertips tracing her skin, as if transported into another realm. When she'd finally set down the story, it was like surfacing from a deep dive, a dizzying disorientation in the now unfamiliar real world. And then one night, as she clutched her latest manuscript, her hands, once steady, began to tremble. It had suddenly dawned on her. She would never be able to live out her dreams. The painful contrast between the happiness she imagined for herself and the loneliness she felt in her waking life began to grow increasingly evident. She understood fully that her dreams were nothing more than delusions, distorted by the prism of unrequited love. Yet, she couldn't escape the clutches of her desire. That same night, in the hours before dawn, Pia sat, staring at her reflection in the mirror, her eyes vacant and hollow. The mirror, a silent witness to her unravelling, revealed a woman of striking physical beauty. She studied her reflection, acknowledging her own allure, questioning if Link saw it too. Her gaze lingered until she caught herself staring. It was reminiscent of a passage from her own stories, the heroine, seated by a mirror, lost in the reverie of love, as she stared longingly into her own reflection. Except for the fact that, in Pia's stories, the heroine always enjoyed her happy ending. 
A pang of envy coursed through Pyre then, prompting a thought to form. What if there was a way for her to fulfill her dreams? A way she could wield the author's pen and rewrite the narrative? It was a thought she had long resisted, a whispered temptation she had always turned away from. But now, it grew louder, more persuasive, clawing its way into her imagination, compelling her to confront the possibilities. Could she play the role of Helia, guiding her own fate? Could she truly forsake her duty for love? Despite her longing, she knew the people of Kakariko village depended on her leadership. Grandmother Impa had entrusted the village and their sacred history to her safekeeping. And no matter how pious loneliness raged late at night, she knew she could not simply cast aside her responsibilities on a foolish gamble. However, one night, after staring for too long into her own reflection, a shudder ran through Pia as she once again recognized the version of herself depicted in those fictional tales. As frustration lingered, the thought resurfaced. What if she didn't have to be a passive reader of her own life? The Shaker had acted decisively before to alter destiny's course. In that moment, Link's smile flashed in her mind, and almost without realizing it, the words, I want him, escaped her lips. Another sliver of a thought began to take shape, slowly forming, molding, and growing. Pia shifted her gaze to the row of books arranged on her bookshelf. Her eyes glided over the titles as she rose from the floor, her hand settling on a weathered book with yellowed pages. The emblem of a dark red Sheikah eye was imprinted on the front. With a gentle breath, she blew off the accumulated dust before opening it, her gaze fixated on a specific page. The book pulsed with anticipation as her hand descended, a finger tracing the ancient text, its words urging her to take that first step. However, just as she was about to delve deeper into its contents, she paused. A knot of uncertainty tugged at her, urging her to step back from the edge of the cliff where she teetered. The decision looming before her carried the weight of kingdoms. Her heart, torn between duty and desire, beat with a frantic rhythm as she pondered her next move. Amidst her stress and confusion, images of Link began to naturally materialize, unbidden yet impossible to ignore. Memories of him became a soothing balm for her frayed nerves. In her mind's eye, he stood there, strong holding her in his arms, atop a mountain peak. His eyes exuded warmth as he whispered those three little words. The scene played out in countless variations, each one ending with his heartfelt declaration. It existed as a simple dream, but it possessed a power over her she could not resist, guiding her toward a precipice she never thought she'd face. She felt herself fascinated by a mere string of yarn, as she peered over the edge. Her breath quickened, the sharp intake of air stirred by the sudden surge of adrenaline. The exhilaration of the unknown, the electrifying pull of risk and reward, all blended in a heady cocktail of hope and fear. Her fingers tingled with excitement. And in the wake of vanishing innocence, like delicate petals carried away by the wind, Pia made her decision. With an exhale, she cast aside lingering doubts, discarding them like old, tattered garments. The gradual erosion of her self-restraint went unnoticed. Her focus was now entirely absorbed in the book. The room became still, the only sound the gentle crackle of the candle's flame as Pia's decision settled upon her like a cloak. The pages of the ancient Sheikah tome felt alive under her touch as if the secrets held within were responding to the resolve in her heart. The decision she had made was not a light one. It was filled with the gravity of altering not just her own fate, but potentially the fabric of reality itself. The Shaker were known for their deep understanding of the mystical forces that governed their world, and Pia, bearing the bloodline, felt the weight of her heritage now more than ever. 
She was a keeper of law, a guardian of ancient histories, and a protector of the sacred. To step beyond these roles into the realm of altering destiny was to walk a path fraught with peril. Yet the image of Link, the hero who had saved Hyrule time and again, infused her with a sense of purpose that eclipsed all fears. Paya's eyes scanned the text, ancient glyphs that spoke of rituals and incantations, of gateways through time and space, and of the delicate art of weaving one's will into the threads of destiny. Her heart quickened at the possibilities, at the thought of a world where her love was not unrequited, where she stood by Link as his equal and his chosen. The candlelight continued to flicker, casting shadows that danced across the walls, as if the very room anticipated the stirrings of magic. Paya's mind raced with the stories she had written, the worlds she had crafted, and the love she had poured into the pages of her diary. They were not just fantasies. They were blueprints of a reality she yearned to manifest. With a deep, steadying breath, Paya whispered an incantation, her voice growing in confidence. The words were ancient Sheikah, passed down through generations, meant only for the direst of circumstances. She felt the air in the room thicken, the energies converging around her, listening, waiting for her command. As she spoke the final syllables, a gust of wind extinguished the candle, plunging the room into darkness. A silence enveloped her, profound and complete. In that moment, Paya realized there was no turning back. She had set forth on a journey not just of the heart, but of the very essence of her being. The fate of Paya, descendant of the Sheikah, was now intertwined with the magic of her ancestors, with the legends of heroes and the silent vows of love unspoken. In the silence of the dark, a new chapter awaited, one that Paya had the power to write with the full force of her will. And so, in the embrace of a pitch-black space, Paya closed the tome, her destiny no longer confined to the pages of her diary, but set upon the vast canvas of the world itself. On page 399 she wrote, I know what needs to be done now. I must answer his call. I cannot deny him. It saddens me to know that it's taken me this long to answer him. He's waited so patiently. I won't fail him again. At first, the thought of successfully capturing Link's heart seemed impossible. However, with each passing evening the fantasy gathered steam, assuming a life of its own. And as days turned into weeks, Paya developed a newfound passion, crafting the perfect plan. Each night, after fulfilling her village duties, she'd retreat to the sanctuary of her room, a domain perfumed with the heady scent of candle wax and ink. Within this haven, her workspace became a landscape of chaos, with scrolls, maps, and notes strewn across every surface. At the center of the mess, the book bearing the worn Shaker emblem remained perpetually open, its presence as constant as the frantic beating of her heart. She'd scribble away at her notes, her eyes sparkling with a dangerous intensity, her hands moving swiftly as she translated her thoughts into a tangible design. Each plan, each twist of the plot, felt like a step closer to the fulfillment of her ultimate dream. Anticipation bubbled up, threatening to burst, for victory seemed to lay tantalizingly near. Her machinations grew more elaborate, her plans meticulously crafted with precision. She was painstaking in her preparation, forecasting each conceivable scenario, preparing for contingencies of every shade. Alternate strategies were interlaced within her primary plan, each a safety net for the other. She examined every facet, pondered every eventuality. Months passed in this manner, and eventually, a tactician emerged from the shadows of isolation, her resolve nurtured and sustained by her greatest muse and motivation. An ever-enduring vision of Link's affectionate grin, a beacon that refused to be extinguished. 
The day had come. The culmination of Pia's meticulous planning was at hand. The linchpin of her elaborate scheme hinged on a letter, crafted with the utmost care and veiled as a formal summons. In the shroud of secrecy, her message made its way to the princess. In her private chambers, Princess Zelda's breath hitched as she absorbed the words Pia had so deliberately composed. The message, laden with urgency and gravity, was unsettling. My dearest princess, there's something I must share with you and it's pressing hard on my heart. It's about our home, our Hyrule, and I fear for its peace. You're the only one I can trust with this, the only one who understands the weight of such secrets. So I'm asking you as a friend to meet me away from prying eyes when the clock strikes midnight. I've left some coordinates for you. I will be waiting. Please be careful. We can't let anyone catch wind of this, not even Link. The shadows lurking over our land are getting heavier by the minute, and I can't shake the feeling that any hint of our talk might set off something terrible. It's for everyone's sake and for Hyrule's future that we keep our meeting a secret. With the deepest concern, Paya. A shiver ran through Zelda as she pondered the letter's ominous tone. Years of friendship and shared trials had solidified her trust in Pia, a bond further affirmed by her closeness to her grandmother, Impa, and grandaunt, Pura. Yet, beneath the surface of this trust, a whisper of uncertainty gnawed at her. She paced the length of her room, the sound of her steps echoing off the walls. Her mind became a battleground of indecision, torn between conflicting instincts. On one hand, her intuition urged her to confide in Link, her appointed knight and protector, whose swordsmanship was only matched by his unwavering loyalty. He was more than just her guardian. He was her confidant, the one in whom she placed her utmost trust. On another hand, Zelda found herself drawn to honor Pia's plea for secrecy. There was a compelling urgency in Pia's words, suggesting a threat that demanded discretion. Zelda could not ignore the intensity of the plea, nor dismiss the potential peril that necessitated such caution. Zelda's hesitation was brief. The safety of Hyrule and its people weighed heavily on her, tipping the scales of her decision. If this clandestine meeting with Pyre held the key to protecting her realm, then she was prepared to face the risks. The princess steeled herself, a silent prayer for guidance leaving her lips. She'd made her decision. She would trust Pia's judgment. She would keep this secret, not out of deception, but driven by the profound duty she bore as Hyrule's guardian. Without wasting any more time, Zelda made her way through a concealed exit within her chambers. A labyrinth of corridors and tunnels, carefully hidden deep beneath the castle, awaited her. These covert passageways, known only to a select few, offered her a means to escape the castle grounds swiftly and without being detected. As she hurried through the tunnels, the vibrant murals adorning the stone walls became a mere blur. The hour of the fated rendezvous had arrived. A calm night presided, with the moon hanging low, bathing the landscape in a silvery luminescence. Zelda hastened along the path, her curiosity swelling with each step, until Kakariko village emerged into view. The village lay nestled within stone walls that ascended with imposing majesty. Thick foliage, consisting of vines and trees, cascaded over the walls, a lush cloak that melded seamlessly with the surrounding greenery offering a natural camouflage. As Zelda's gaze swept over the magnificent structures before her, the tranquility of the moment was abruptly shattered by the sound of rustling footsteps coming from behind. Startled, she turned, and there stood Pia, a welcome sight in the midst of the secrecy that surrounded them. Yet, as they exchanged greetings, Zelda couldn't help but sense an unusual tension in Pia's demeanor. The fleeting avoidance of eye contact and the restless fidgeting of her fingers 
betrayed an underlying unease. Zelda acknowledged this subtle undercurrent of awkwardness, but quickly dismissed it, attributing it to the clandestine nature of their meeting. Without much word, Pyre promptly guided Zelda to a quiet locale beyond the village borders. I've done as you asked, Zelda said. Now tell me, what's this looming shadow you referred to in the letter? Princess, Pyre responded, her voice steady. There are forces at play, forces that are beyond my control. I need your trust and cooperation. There is something I must disclose, but not here. Pyre guided Zelda forward, their footsteps rustling softly on the grass as they moved closer to a sight that captured the princess's attention. In the pale glow of the moonlight, a wooden carriage and horse gradually came into view. It was an odd sight, heightened by the shroud of a dark cloth draped over the rear of the carriage. Approaching, Pyre motioned towards it. Please, step inside. Zelda nodded in silent understanding. With light, cautious steps, she advanced. Bracing herself, she parted open the dark curtain and stepped inside. Her eyes strained in the darkness. To her surprise, the carriage was empty, save for a tangle of rope and patches of black cloth strewn across the wooden floorboard. Perplexed, she thought aloud. What are we doing here? Following behind, Pyre entered the carriage, her presence causing a subtle shift in the air. With a quick motion, she sealed the entryway behind her. And as Pyre's gaze met Zelda's, a coldness clouded over her eyes. No words escaped her lips, leaving only silence between them. The expression on Pyre's face was unfamiliar to Zelda, a stark departure from the warmth and familiarity she was accustomed to. In the claustrophobic space of the carriage, Zelda's senses heightened, her body tensed with a jolt of alertness. It was as if a switch had been flipped, instantly snapping her into the present. The silence that fell upon them felt suffocating as it stretched out for what seemed an eternity, every passing second only amplifying Zelda's unease. Questions swirled in her mind. She was desperate for answers that Pyre's expression refused to offer. The princess struggled to find her voice, her mind racing for an explanation that eluded her grasp. Pyre! She eventually said. Are you all right? Pyre never changed her expression. She didn't smile. She didn't frown. She didn't make a single sound. She simply stood there, staring back at Zelda in complete, utter silence. A chilling sensation gripped Zelda as she sensed something was deeply amiss. Before she could utter another word, a sharp and searing pain exploded across her forehead. In a single, fractured instant, Pyre had struck Zelda over the head with a blunt object. Zelda didn't see the attack. The event unfolded in a blur. The pain slammed through every sense, obliterating sight and sound, down to disconnected flashes. She didn't even feel her body hit the ground as the lights abruptly went out. In the span of a heartbeat, darkness rushed in to claim her, swallowing every thought and sensation until nothing remained. Cold. That was the first muddled thought that entered Zelda's returning consciousness. Utter dripping cold seeped through her clothes. An alien smothering sensation clung to her like a drenched second skin, unfamiliar and abrasive, dominating all other perceptions drifting back from pitch oblivion. Gradually, other details filtered through the chill demanding most of her feeble attention, the rasp of grit against her cheek, the foul metallic tang pooling under her tongue. And something jerked at her ankles, again and again. With enormous effort, Zelda peeled her eyelids apart, fragments snapping together as she blinked against the sickly red haze. It wasn't second skin enveloping her, but mud. Each jerk and pull jolted her awake, while the cold embrace of the earth continued to seep through her clothes and cling to her skin. The blindfold over her eyes deprived Zelda of any view, leaving her in a world of darkness. 
she could hear faint echoes of trickling water in the distance, and her nose crinkled at the subtle scent of moss mingling with the humidity in the air. Gradually, awareness seeped in, accompanied by a sharp, throbbing pain in her head. It felt as if hot needles were pricking her temples, a relentless reminder of the impact that had left her disoriented. Alarm surged through her as she attempted to scream, but the rough gag against her mouth smothered any sound she could make. Breathing came in erratic gasps, each inhale and exhale jagged, as if her lungs were struggling to catch up with her racing heart. Her fingers, numbed by the cold, fumbled around the rough texture of the rope that bound her wrists together. Her hands and ankles securely bound, Zelda's struggles proved futile. Questions swirled in her mind, each one more urgent than the last. Who had struck her over the head? Where was she exactly? And what of Pia's fate? Was Pia okay? The weight of these unknowns pressed upon her. Zelda's thoughts raced to Link, her last beacon of hope. She desperately clung to the belief that somehow he would defy the odds and find her. Her mind painted vivid scenarios where he would burst onto the scene, wielding his sword and rescuing her in the nick of time. But as the reality sank in, it felt like a dagger piercing her heart. Nobody knew where she was. She stopped herself, realizing her slow descent into panic. Despite her dire situation, Zelda resolved not to succumb to despair. Captivity was not unfamiliar territory for her. She would fight, she would survive, and she would find a way back to the light, just as she'd always done. Gripping the cloth in her teeth, she unleashed a fierce scream. He won't hear you. A familiar voice echoed back. Zelda fell silent. She recognized the source of the voice. He'll never be able to hear you again, Pia said. Zelda's eyes widened, her eyebrows furrowing together in a silent plea for answers. The unspoken question was etched on her face, a desperate yearning to understand. She longed to call out to Pia, to seek solace and reassurance in her voice. But all that escaped her throat was a stifled, muted cry. Without warning, Pia abruptly ceased dragging, callously releasing Zelda's body onto the unforgiving soil with a resounding thud. The impact reverberated through Zelda's body, sending a shockwave of pain. As if the universe itself conspired against her, a sudden onslaught of rain cracked the sky, heralding a tempest of lightning and thunder. Darkened clouds loomed overhead, releasing a torrential downpour that drenched the scene, intensifying the already harrowing atmosphere. Each droplet seemed to mirror Zelda's despair, as if nature itself wept for her. Zelda continued struggling to break free from her restraints. Her focus waned as fat, cold drops of rain pelted her. The rain fell hard and fast, and made a wall of water that soaked everything it touched. The rain drummed on leaves, soil and creek, drowning out every other sound and saturating the air with nature's fury. Meanwhile, Zelda, already disoriented, lay drenched and trembling, utterly vulnerable to the onslaught. Raindrops continued to beat against her face as it absorbed her tears. The thunder rumbled overhead, its ferocity filling the air and drowning out every panicked breath. Her thoughts became a jumbled mess as she fought in the muck, desperate for escape. Zelda released a sigh of relief when Pia removed the blindfold. As her eyes adjusted to the light, she was shocked to find herself in a familiar place. The Farron rainforest stretched out before her, its towering palm trees forming a dense canopy that shrouded them in shadows. Moss-covered stones peeked out from the undergrowth, and the air was thick with the scent of damp earth and ancient magic. She craned her neck with effort, still addled senses attempting to decode why ancient statues marked with arcane shika glyphs stood vigilant over her like silent sentinels. Twisting further caused bindings to bite deeper, and Zelda winced as understanding clicked. 
She lay pinned to the cold earth at these monuments' center. Pyre's deadpan stare remained fixed on her captive. Release me this instant! Zelda continued to shift against her restraints, her eyes searching Pyre's for any glimmer of understanding or connection. But Pyre remained silent, her expression an enigma. Why are you doing this? Zelda cried, shivering. I don't understand. We're allies, friends. Why would you turn against me like this? Pyre's eyes were impenetrable stone, revealing nothing. The tension between them stretched like a taut wire, threatening to snap. Speak to me! Zelda pleaded. I thought we shared a bond, a connection. What has changed? Pyre's unspoken words mingled with the growl of thunder. Pyre! Whatever the problem is, we can solve it together. You, me, and Link! Zelda's frantic plea was cut off abruptly as Pyre's hands met with a sharp clap that cracked through the thunder. Without shifting her vacant stare, Pyre slowly interlaced her own fingers. Moments stretched before she finally spoke again, her voice clear over the storm's fury. I've tried to bury these feelings. Love is a complex thing. Sometimes it leads us to make difficult decisions. Zelda briefly fell silent before she uttered, Love, I, I don't understand. Pyre said nothing as she closed her eyes. She felt the rain washing over her, washing away the last of her doubts. Pyre, please, talk to me. Whatever's concerning you, we can discuss it. What do you want me to do? Pyre released a long exhale. Slowly, she reopened her eyes. You've already done everything I've asked of you, Princess. And for that, you have my gratitude. In that moment, Pyre's hands rose, fingers still entwined. A soft, ethereal glow began to emanate from their tips in a mesmerizing display. And as Pyre chanted in a long-forgotten tongue, the statues, once lifeless and still, began to stir. A faint hum emanated from their stone forms, growing in intensity with each verbalized note. Her fingertips left trails of shimmering light as she moved them through the air, effortlessly weaving intricate designs that danced and swirled. Her movements were fluid, her concentration unwavering as the gentle luminescence floated in front of her. Zelda's pupils dilated as she watched the statue's pulse with an eerie glow. An unsettling shift coursed through her then. The once solid forms that surrounded her began to waver and warp, as if they were mere illusions fading away. Shapes blurred and merged together, creating a disorienting spectacle where reality seamlessly blended with the surreal. Colors, once vibrant and distinct, now bled and melded into one another, creating a grayish palette. The boundaries between hues dissolved, leaving behind an indistinguishable mixture of shades. It was as if the very essence of the world itself was being consumed by a chaotic haze. The once familiar landscapes and objects now appeared distorted and unrecognizable, their true forms obscured by the relentless metamorphosis taking place before her eyes. Pyre's fingers continued their intricate dance, the glow on her fingertips seamlessly merging with the light radiating from the statues. Zelda's scream pierced through the storm, her eyes stretched wide and unblinking. Darkness eventually consumed her vision entirely, plunging her into a bottomless expanse of black. The Shaker ritual, with its ruthless precision, had blinded her. Stop this! Pyre, please! She cried, her voice fighting to be heard against the hum of the ritual. Let me go! Pyre ignored her cries as she continued moving her hands through the air with fluid grace. Beneath Zelda's skin, Every inch of her began to tingle with an unnerving numbness. The sensation was jarring, as if her body was being unraveled into spaghetti-like strings. In this disorienting moment, the boundaries of her body and mind seemed to blur and dissolve. The world gradually grew devoid of familiar sensations, as she found herself unable to discern any scent or taste in the air. Her heartbeat, once thundering in her ears, faded into a distant echo. Sounds that once held clarity and presence were now distant and muffled, as though her ears had been wrapped in layers of cotton. Link! Link!
Link! Zelda cried out as she wriggled in the mud. Link! She felt a profound emptiness seeping through her, as if every part of her mind and body was slowly being drained away. Memories, emotions, ambitions, and aspirations began to dissolve into the void. The name of the person she had desperately called out to just moments ago slipped away too, lost within the fog of her fading consciousness. Soon enough she'd even forgotten her own name. By then she'd stopped squirming. She just lay there, her form wavering in and out, in and out, in and out, until she was gone. Gone without understanding why. Gone without a final embrace from her beloved knight. Gone as if she never mattered. All that remained was empty air, with not even a shadow left behind. No indication the Radiant Princess had just moments before pleaded desperately for life itself. The statue's glow dissipated, their forms growing still once again, and the world around Pyre settled, leaving behind nothing but the faint echoes of unheard screams. The ritual was complete. For hours, Pyre stood motionless in the rain, her gaze fixed on the empty spot where Zelda's body had been. And for the first time in years, she felt a genuine smile tug at the corners of her mouth. This time, it was not a mask. It was a real, genuine smile. She continued to stand silently, unmoving, until she finally remembered that her plan demanded she be seen exiting her house before the sun rose again. With that awareness, Pyre turned away from the Farron rainforest and began her journey back.